Okay, so this uh, last one is about the uh, the demand drop or excess excess supply, and um, a prime example of that is what uh, Dan mentioned earlier about Russia's plan uh, to uh, put the U.S. shale producers out of business and flood the market with oil. So this just happened, and um, it caused a dynamic drop in um, the price of oil, which uh, caused um, production to slow uh, and and but at the same time there there was a, a push to try to gain market share by Russia and Saudi Arabia and when they did that they've kind of flooded the market with with oil and um, so it's not uh, this in this example the um, the the world is going to potentially run out of places to put this oil with this big push being to gain market share and drop the prices. Um, with, with that comes along the fact that some of these production facilities cannot just, you can't just go and flip a big black switch and shut that thing down. It takes time to be able to ramp it down. And then once you ramp it down, it will not be able to pick back up and produce again. So if this is a short-term V type of a, of a scenario and things crank back up again, then uh, some of these facilities take, take months to be able to ramp production back up again because, the, um, because of lots of different things that have to happen, including heating up the storage uh, of, the, of the production facilities. So um, it just adds to increased volatility that's going to go through this in this example. Next slide, please. So we're going to look at the price crash and ev evaluate some hedge consumptions. Um, and hedging is a process that um, is uh, that a lot of companies do when they're dealing with um, raw materials uh, that are commodities and and they have uh, there's a lot of price volati volatility with those and in a situation like this where you have a price crash then you can have a short-term uh, mitigation strategy to um, to do spot purchases that could be a lot cheaper for your raw material um, and then in medium term, you might choose to do uh, repossession, reposition some of your hedge commitments for future months based on what your evaluation is and your simulations tell you to do. And then, um, and then in the longer term, you could even work with your customers and um, evaluate their requirements that are going to affect your hedge, hedge positions in the, in the future. So our increased production costs for storage is another uh, significant um, impact that you have to evaluate when you're dealing with um, when you're dealing with something like this, where you possibly would go out and purchase some extra um, and put into case uh, push production to be able to move some of these um, rail cars and and the demurrage that's being incurred. So you have to kind of balance that. So in the short term, you would try to put in some simulation to be able to see what your storage cost is going to be. And it might be cheaper for you to buy the oil cheaper, pay demurrage, and be able to have extra supply to be able to build more product that you know you're gonna use in the future. And you can simulate here to be able to decide if that's the right thing to do. Being able to do, um, to evaluate your financial hedges and compare those to your gallons of production then is is really important um, and can help you maybe even in the medium or long term to decide to do more wet gallon purchases versus financial hedges looking at the cash flow requirements that would be required to to do spot purchases and and put in some push production can also uh, be a, a mitigation strategy Next slide, please. So uh, doing these hedges, we're gonna look now at this, at this uh, hedge uh, short-term 
action plan and look at some of the things that we can do, some specific tasks, how we can address that. So uh, I have over 15 years of experience doing different, um, different hedging in different industries and that it affects so many different industries in, in, um, in the raw materials in many cases, in some cases that's the finished good output, but um, being able to see the impact uh, that is had on these commodities by these disruptions is really important. And then being able to take that and look at the simulate the scenarios that can come out of that and make decisions that's going to maximize your margin is, is uh, very, very important. And so um, in some cases, the commodity raw material is 70, 70 plus percent of the total finished goods price. So being able to rapidly uh, evaluate and um, adjust the future hedges as well as making spot market decisions is really important. And the only way that you can really do that is to play out some scenarios in, in a simulation environment. And uh, again, that's where we start with all of these tasks is looking at what we can do to try to simulate what we think is gonna happen in the future with these demand and supply changes. So push production is one of the primary things when you have an excess um, stock situation. Push production is one of the primary um, solutions that you can do on products where you know that you're gonna sell those in the future and you don't have shelf life issues. You can, um, you can start trying to do scenario planning on how much you can produce and what the impact of that is on your production network, but as well as what that could be for your product and your product cost. So um, we would, in the short term, update some hedging data, run these simulations, and then the result of that would allow us to be able to make some updates to master data around uh, maybe uh, signing some new hedge attributes, uh, putting in some transactional data, such as uh, financial hedge volume and oil comes consumption volume, looking at the configuration of your, um, your hedge consumption and trying to make sure that you're covering all of your bases there. And then um, in the long term, try to look at uh, using different types of hedge hedges, um, a swap or a put or a call to, to be able to uh, maximize the, or minimize your cost and maximize your margins for this in, in um, uh, where you have these disruptions or these chances to uh, increase push production. So this is just an example of one of these mitigation um, action plans and the specific tasks that would be assigned to that.